Hola! This is a presentation of how to contextualize literature using technology for my online classes. This project was put together for Spanish 2001, and I plan to use it this semester for my classes. They will have a project based around these activities. And my 2001 classes will be studying the two different past tenses as a review. There are two in Spanish, so it's good to have them Hola! This is a presentation of how I am using technology to contextualize literature for my Spanish 2001 classes. For my Spanish Online 2001 classes, I am using a set of activities that already exist in the SuperSite that were published or created and my own activities that I have created together to form a project that they will be completing at the end of the semester. Because I have not yet released them for the, the classes in which I will be using them, I've created a little demo course here that shows them coming up due soon so that I can show you what the activities uh, contain, what they consist of. So the objective of this project is to put the passage into context for the students, to make it more meaningful, to keep them in the literature and not having to go out to Google Translate or Word Reference to look up words, but to rather to keep them focused on the piece as they are in it, to teach culture through literature, and to use the story as a springboard for communication. In fact, though it is based on a reading, it does incorporate all four language skills. So they will be reading, writing, listening, and speaking, all using technology. It also incorporates the three modes of communication, interpretive, interpersonal, and presentational. So for the first round of assignments, they would be doing what's called pre-lectura, pre-reading, and those would have one due date and be grouped together because I would expect them to complete those before reading the piece of literature, which is a short story, and I want them to get the context for that story. So I want them to get the feel for not only where the story takes place by doing sort of a cultural exploration of the setting, but also to refresh themselves on the grammar points that are being used in the story. The story is by an Argentinian author, and his name is Gennady. His first name is Marco, Marco Gennady. So he's from Argentina, and the story is called Esquina Peligrosa. The Dangerous Corner. So what I want for them to do before they launch into the story itself is to get some background. So they will begin with a couple of uh, grammar activities and grammar reviews. So that's where I'll take you now. This particular activity is one that I created. So they would come into this activity and see that they are supposed to review what is on this page here. And it is basically a presentation that I put together. El pretérito o el imperfecto. It is audio enabled, but I'm going to mute it so that you don't have to hear me on top of me. <laughs> so essentially, it's a review that I put together of after me. two different past tenses in Spanish. And they often require lots of reviews because they are difficult to, main, to retain for students uh, and to differentiate. So I go through a review of the forms, the conjugation, there, as well as a review of how they are used together to narrate a story. And that is exactly what they will be encountering in the story Esquina Peligrosa. So the uses of the together is to tell a story and how they contrast to one another. This little acrostic. And anything I think might help them remember, such as an illustration. 
And now for A, so I tell a little story that that's a very rudimentary cartoon to illustrate how the two interweave when storytelling. The Fredericks is used to near and just give them some you can envision different ways of thinking about these two tenses. For some visual is best, so I give a reference of the dots in time being the preterite versus the line through time being the imperfect. The preterite and also to give them sort of overarching ways of thinking of the two as opposed to just lists of when to use each. Acrostic is when use this little acrostic. they are appropriate. Push. And finally, the English correlation. So they can see that we do have different ways of expressing the past tense in English as well. So they would start with that. And then in the same little activity, I have a song that one of my Spanish classes actually performed. I wrote the song and was lucky enough to have a guitar player and singer in the class. And so the class and I sang along. So I'll let that play for a minute. And by the way, this is housed in the super site, but it's a video that I created and uploaded to YouTube. And the super site allows me to house the video here inside of the activity shell. how much more difficult it is to learn the preterite based on how many conjugations and irregulars it has, and also uh, how students are always confusing the, the fue with the fui forms of, of the preterite. But nonetheless, so they get a nice review, plus they get a, a little modicum of entertainment. A lot of times, learning something to a melody really does help with retention. So that's the first activity that they encounter, is basically a, a review via a, a tutorial that I put together online and a song that my class sings. Now they get into some reviews that are embedded into the SuperSite that are actually SuperSite tutorials specifically designed for our text. And these are reviewed because they would have covered them in the lesson prior to the level they're currently taking. Bienvenidos a clase. The preterite and the imperfect. The preterite and the... Okay, I'm not going to say all this, but you can see they would be able to watch a tutorial that would review for them how the two are used and how they differ. And then they're also able to do uh, some activities for review. And again, this would be review for them. Uh, so this is an activity where they have to select the correct form and the correct tense. So upon completing that, and that this one is also a SuperSite activity that housed within our textbook online. So after that, then my focus would be to have them get themselves in the mindset of the author by visiting his homeland. Um, so I actually had the opportunity to travel to Argentina, to Buenos Aires, and also to the waterfalls of Icosu. So I put together essentially a photo journey, un viaje por fotos. And this is also housed in YouTube, but I put it together using Shutterfly and my own mic. And then I created that link here inside the SuperSite so that it looks like a SuperSite activity that they would complete for homework. So I'll play just a little bit of this. Hola y bienvenidos al viaje por fotografías a Buenos Aires, Argentina. Welcome to this photo journey. Buenos Aires is the capital of Argentina. And it's just the number of the capital. Again, various 
Aries of Town and just basically narrates historical facts, uh, geographical points of importance, cultural notes about their immigrants from various countries. Uh, we tour a beautiful cemetery and then I show them the pictures outside of the capital city that are taken at the waterfall that are known as And because it's located in the for animals, we were able to go taking them in and enjoying them while we are there, um, which means you do get wet and the noise is pretty deafening. So that's the viaje por fotos. And again, this is just to give them an idea of what it's like where the author lives. So that to put that into context for them. And then there are also within this set of activities some others that are based on the location of the story. The nice thing is that even though Argentina is the country of focus for Lesson 11 and the reading I've selected for them is in Lesson 14, because of the fact that I can pick and choose activities from wherever I'd like and in the order I'd like, I can group them all together as a unit or a project, even though they're not from the same lesson. So uh, this is just a little interactive map that the publisher has inside of the online uh, platform. And they click around to explore. And then here they can actually see where Buenos Aires is, where Rio de, uh, Rio de la Plata is, and where the uh, Cataratas de Cuasú where they're located, and they can also explore some more by clicking around. They have a far better picture of La Avenida Nueve de Julio than I had in my presentation. <laughs> I didn't get that aerial shot. <laughs> but anyway, they can click around, and then after they've explored some at their own pace, um, they can watch a video on, of course, the, the well-known dance, National Dance of Argentina, which I also allude to in my presentation. And it's interesting to note that it uh, originated with the Italian working class immigrants and was considered vulgar. Because it was considered a vulgar dance by the well-to-do society in, in Buenos Aires. It wasn't until the Parisians started dancing it that the Argentinians decided to adopt it as their national dance. So then the wealthy citizens of Buenos Aires claimed it after all. <laughs> it had to be exported before it could be imported. So they have some activities that they complete based on their review of facts about Argentina and in, in slightly increasing levels of difficulty here. Um, and then they will go online and do a little, little bit of research and find some answers to questions um, about Argentina. So they progressed from very closed-ended responses, a multiple choice activity, to a little more open-ended where they respond with one complete sentence per question, to something that's very open-ended where they must research keywords um, and, and topics and then write in paragraph form. So that would be the first set of activities that they would complete. And the last several were super site activities that already exist. I, I didn't create those. I did create the photo journey. Uh, that was the last one that was something that I put together. Um, then another due date, and I don't know that I would necessarily have them put together, but uh, another due date would have them actually read the short story. But before they do, I think it's important for them to get some context with unfamiliar vocabulary. Now, by this point, they would have already done uh, terminology related to most of the stories, themes, and topics. But there were just a few words that I knew they had not learned yet. And so I put together this activity so that I could teach them the words directly, the direct methodology, showing a visual saying the word in Spanish without the reference to English. So I created the directions here, which tells them to look at the pictures and to see the words, to listen to my recording. So I uploaded the photos, and I also uploaded a recording. Repite cada palabra nueva después de mí. Aceituna. Canasta. Estancia. 
And then after listening to me say the words, they would be instructed to record their own voice saying those same words. So they would actually be submitting a recording. Uh, so this is to practice speaking skills, obviously listening as well. But this is not one with another student. This is just one that each student would individually submit. And after learning that new vocab, the students would go on to actually reading the story. Um, this is already in the super site. This is the reading selection for this particular chapter. But I was able to add a note. So this here in gray is what's considered an instructor note or annotation. Um, so I'm reminding them that in order to listen to the story, they can press the little blue button next to the title because some of them don't realize that they can actually have a native speaker's voice read the story to them. So it's really nice to have the correlation of the written word and the spoken word for pronunciation reinforcement. And also to help with spelling because once they hear a sound and they see the spelling, they will be able to recall the spelling of the word much easier having that audio link to hook that to. It also notes for them that unfamiliar vocabulary is up at the top and they would have already seen the other vocabulary in the previous activity that I created. So to see and hear and there was read and listen to this story, they open up the page and the, the blue El Señor audio button. El magnate de las finanzas, uno de los hombres más ricos del mundo, sintió un día el vehemente deseo de mí. And they can stop at any time if they need to absorb what they've read. Esquina peligrosa, Marco de Nevi. El Señor Epididimus. So once they reach the end of the story, once they reach the end of the story, they would then move along to activities that are more interpretive in nature. So this one is a very close-ended true-false activity. This is basically to let them know very quickly if they understood the key aspects of the reading. And if they did not, then they can go back and read it again. There's no, nothing prohibiting them from going backwards to review previous activities. Then they will also go on to do something that is interpretive where they need to answer questions based on what they've read. And it's a little more open-ended, a little more challenging, where they do have to formulate their own responses. And that, can, that concludes the second set of assignments that they would do. Now, our super site only shows two due dates at a time by design, so that we don't have students working too far ahead of where they're supposed to be. Um, but they do have access to a calendar, and so do I. So I'll just show you what the last set of activities would consist of. The group that we just saw uh, would be considered lectura, the reading activities, those that are directly tied to the reading, the vocab in the reading, the reading itself, and the more objective questions about the reading. So the last set of this project, uh, the last group, rather, of, of assignments would consist of uh, more subjective activities and more communicative activities. So this first one is one that I created. It is a composition topic. And they have to decide which of the three interpretations that are the standard, widely accepted interpretations of this story is most compelling to, to each student personally. So there is no one right answer. There are three different ways to interpret the story. And they must decide which one they believe to be most accurate. And then for uh, this composition, they also must write their own opinion of the story. So this is a, a truly interpretive activity. And once they complete that, and of course you're, you're practicing your writing skills as well, once they complete that, they'll do the interpersonal activity, which is a partner chat. So for the partner chat, they are going to be describing with a partner their memories. And their memories are about something that happened in their own childhood. So this is not necessarily 
directly related to the story, but the point is they are having to use the preterite and the imperfect to tell a story that's personal to them, and that is very, very representative of what, what you would do in real life when speaking with a native speaker of a different language. You would be swapping stories. So that's what I want them to do, and it does tie in in that they are talking about stories from their childhood because the story is about um, the, the uh, main character's reminiscences of his childhood. So it does relate in that way. Okay, bear with me just one moment here. Okay, going back to sharing. I was telling me I had a problem with my sharing, so I just want to make sure that this is visible. Hopefully, hopefully it is. Okay, so the instructions are given above. I, I was able to enter the title I wanted for this activity. I was able to enter the instructions that I wanted. And the students, when they are completing this activity, will choose a partner, although I will recommend that they partner in advance so that they are online at the same time as someone who is also ready to do that same activity. But this is a great activity in that the students actually communicate in real time with each other, just as you would when speaking to someone in a foreign language in real life. So they're not doing this as a voice board. They're not all having to be online at the same time in a Blackboard Collaborate classroom. They are just pairing off, and each pair decides the time and the day that works best. And for this particular activity, I would probably allot a week so that they would have the best chance of matching schedules. So once someone is invited to partner, um, the student clicks on that person's name, that person would invite the other, and I don't want to invite D because that would, um, that would frighten her. <laughs> she, she hasn't even known this activity exists yet. But nonetheless, they would invite someone to participate and record, and they do record together. It actually picks up both parts of the recording, and they can use webcams, or they can just use microphones. And when I go to grade these, it's a split screen. So if D partnered with, say, um, John, D's picture would be on the left in her video, and John's would be on the right. And I would listen to it simultaneously, but have a different field for entering grades and feedback for each. So I can grade them at the same time from the same page. So they, they would get different grades, of course. Uh, I can also give audio feedback. So I can correct pronunciation. For example, if B pronounced it um, estanteria, I could say, no, no, it's estanteria. Repeat after me, estanteria. So I can give them feedback in, in audio form or in written form or both. Now, in this particular activity, I also have included an audio file. And I've also uploaded a video. So just giving them a sample of the kind of story I'm, I'm looking for them to share. And so that would be, again, considered an interpersonal activity. And finally, and this is one that I, I created and housed in the super site, finally they would do a voice board at the end of this project. I cannot do the voice board just yet because I want it to only release when I'm ready for them to see it. Uh, but the voice board would be essentially for them to research a Spanish-speaking country and to imagine that they had recently taken a trip there. And then they would share in Spanish an account of their experience. And they would need to cite and reference real places within that country and use those real places and, and real facts and real historical um, data as the backdrop for a story. But I would want them to create the story as a work of fiction, sort of like an historical fiction. So they would completely invent the characters 
and the plot of what happens to them while traveling there. So that would be the presentational mode of communication. And that would be done as a voice board. I would expect that to just be individually posted. Um, and the students could simply tell that story. And other members of the class can, of course, reply just as with any discussion board. So I might house that in the super site, and I might house it uh, in our learning management system iCollege, which is desire to learn, but nonetheless, they would have the same ability in either place. And that's my project. Gracias. Adios.